Hey everyone, this is Matt. Welcome back to the Mental Toughness Podcast. Uh, this is going to be a little different than what you are normally used to. Uh, usually I have a guest for these and the guest I guess today is me. But I had this topic that I wanted to really dive into today and it has to do with beliefs that have made us the people that we are today. All right, things we've grown up with, things that we were taught from, you know, perhaps as a parent or a loved one or a coach, but some belief that has been ingrained in our subconscious mind, which has led us to act a certain way. So I want to spend a few minutes with you today talking about that. Um, I have one belief that I want to share with you that I, I've personally experienced and something that I work on and, and uh, something that I'll show you in a minute, uh, something that I focus on on a daily basis, kind of reaching this power that we have inside us. Um, so a couple things before I jump into that topic. One, uh, hey, be on the lookout. You can see this. I got the, the versions behind me as well, a, a women's and men's shirt that says mentally tough on it with the logo on the back. Uh, super excited. I had a, a bunch of these made and we'll be putting those on out on the website here shortly that you can, uh, you can buy a really cool t-shirt and, and kind of take a look at that. The second thing I want to ask of you uh, for this podcast, I hope you're able to go back and, and listen to all the ones that we've recorded so far. We've had some just absolutely amazing guests from professional athletes to amazing entrepreneurs and business leaders and CEOs and just a whole mix of different people. And I've got some really, really cool guests coming up, uh, including my wife here in the next couple of weeks uh, to talk nutrition. But if you would go to the Mental Toughness Podcast, please like it. Uh, please follow us. Please share it with your friends. Give us a rating on this podcast. Uh, we just need your help with that as we get this out to the world and, and expose people to what having a strong mindset is all about. Because you know, it's all about building your confidence, your focus, your emotional control, your energy, building those into high performance habits. That is where we get to where we want to go in every area of life. So without further ado, let's jump into today's topic around beliefs. And it's interesting because beliefs can be good or they can be bad, right? They can propel us forward or they can hold us back. It's all about ultimately how we frame them, how we see them, uh, how we choose to look at them, right? Because we have that choice in everything that we do. Um, but what we have to be very careful of is when we talk about putting these limitations on ourselves, they are either fear or belief driven at its core because those fears and those beliefs live in our subconscious mind. Now, most of you probably watching this, you're pretty educated individuals, right? But when you look at you know, our brain, we've got kind of two minds, right? A conscious mind and a subconscious mind. In our conscious mind, our brain's running about like three to 5% of like everything going on, right? So the other 95 to 97% is our subconscious mind. It's our automatic behavior. It's the habits that we've formed, right? Breathing, we don't have to think about. That's run by kind of that subconscious mind, that, that automatic part of the brain. Um, but all of these beliefs ultimately live in the subconscious mind and then show up consciously when we're put in different scenarios. And one that um, you know, I've talked a lot about in my history, one that has you know, held me back in the past uh, really stems from my my baseball days, uh, and you know I had in my mind in, in when I was in the corporate world. Uh, you know when I initially started out this business, and it's something I have to be careful of. Is I had this kind of pre preconceived belief of the level that I could or should be playing at. Okay, and amazingly enough, when I would get close to that level, like I, I would almost like stop, right? It would kill my momentum. I wouldn't be able to go any further. And it was until I started really diving into like what, like why am I constantly like when I get to this level, I'm sabotaging myself almost, right? Maybe you've experienced that where you know, things are going along really well and then all of a sudden you, you approach a level where it gets a little bit uncomfortable and then it's like the wheels fall off the bus, right? It's like everything starts going wrong. And that's that kind of self-sabotage concept, right? Um, you start behaving a little differently, acting a little differently. You start noticing when, you know, not the good things, but the tough things. And then you either 
end up below that level or right at that level or whatever your expectation is. So a lot of it, you know, if we want to progress in the corporate world, have a great marriage, if we want to grow a business to a whole new level of revenue, right? Whatever we're striving for, if we want to like lose the weight, keep it off, all that stuff. I started to dive into like what what is your belief around the level that you believe you can get to? Right? What 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 is the level that you have subconsciously set for yourself. And the greatest example is, is I have from the baseball days. Um, this happened to me from like a revenue perspective, uh, from an uh, income perspective was when I was back in the corporate world. It was like, I get to, you know, just enough and then, and not over that. It was until I dug in to this, what started in baseball for me, um, that helped unlock. And I, 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 you know, understand this is one belief of many that I've had to kind of go through and uncover and figure out like what's truly driving it. Where does this belief come from? So in the game of baseball, for those of you not familiar with baseball, uh, when you are a 300 hitter, you are considered pretty darn good. Okay. Uh, to the point of if you're in, you know, at the major league at the best of the best level um, and you're a 300 hitter for your career, chances are pretty high. You're going to be a hall of famer. Right, I mean, chances are pretty high, assuming a lot of other factors, but that's pretty darn good. And so, when I was, you know, very young in baseball, I learned that kind of a 300 hitter is pretty legendary, right? That you're going to be a Hall of Famer. And I grew up with this belief, right? So I'd watch these major league batters, and and you know, would uh, you know chuckle at some of the ones that were below 300. There were a certain few that were hitting like you know, 325, 350, you know, it's baseball is a game based on failure, right? So you are successful three out of 10 times, which is a 300 hitter, you know, um, that you're going to be pretty successful. And so I grew up with that belief. And what was interesting is I approached these uh, income levels, right? In the corporate world, as I approached these revenue levels in my business now, and I always, I always feel like I got stuck. Because I had this belief that I had translated from like baseball being a 300 hitter to like what that value was in revenue or income, right? So, uh, you know, when I had this thought about being a 300 hitter, um, when I was in high school playing baseball, um, what do you think my batting average was? It was pretty close to 300, right? When I was in college, about the same. When I played professionally overseas, it was actually a little bit higher. Um, but what I found interesting as I dove in is that uh, I thought about my, the way I'd performed. When I, and, and this is at any level, would start hitting like above 300, right? So like 325, 350, what, what do you think I did? Right, how did I react to that, do you think? Now a lot of people, you might be saying, oh my gosh, you were so joyful and happy and you just kept it going and started hitting 400 or 450 or 500. And the truth is that no, if I started hitting about like 325, 350, what I would tend to do is go back to the level that I had set that was success for me. So if I hit 350, then I would kind of take the foot off the gas a little bit and I go back to a 300 hitter. Now, if I started hitting worse, right? So 275, 250, 200, hopefully I don't remember getting that bad. But all of a sudden, I would pick up my activity to get back up to that 300 level because that is how I defined success. In high school, I should have been a 500 hitter. That's the reality. I should have been. Now I started to learn this over, you know, over time that when I was in you know, Austria playing professionally, my batting average was like 390 or something like that. So I started to learn these things over time of like, why am I putting a limit on myself, right? But that was ingrained in my head. So goodness sake, if I went one for three, right, got one hit out of three at bats one night, I'm like, wow, that's 333. If you do the math, right? That's a 333 batting average. That's pretty good, which means I'm pretty much done for today because I'm hitting above what I thought was successful. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? When you really think about it and dig into these things, because that same thing I've translated to other parts of my business, right? Where I believe I can earn X amount, but I'd always be right at that amount. And it was almost painful to go above that, right? Or to feel like I need to stay at this weight. And I'd be like just there, but like over it. Ultimately, I'd lose it at the end of the day. 
And that's where these beliefs, I, I think, are absolutely incredible to start understanding this. So part, part of this is there's kind of a, a couple step process that you have to go through, right? And the first is kind of thinking about like, where in your life do you, do you sometimes get stuck, right? Uh, where do you feel it's difficult to get past a certain threshold? So it's thinking of those moments and then it's going this next step and being like, okay, like what ultimately do I believe about that? What belief is driving that, right? That maybe I can't do it or success is at this level, not that level. Uh, what did my parents teach me? What did my teachers uh, plant in my head? What did coaches say to me that led me to that point? But it's tracing it back to like, what is the true belief I have around that? And then where did it start? Where did it start? That is the, the key. I could go into so many others that I have of these beliefs. And so once you understand kind of where it comes from, then this is where I believe the fun part comes in, right? Because we have this power inside us to rewrite the story, to, uh, to reframe it, to look at, it, look at that belief as something that is not true and it's not permanent for sure. Right? It might be true, but it's not permanent because we have the choice and we can train our brains a certain way to move past and through that thing, right? Or train ourselves when that belief crops up, which it will, that we've got the tools to actually move through that and not believe it for very long. So one of the, um, this is a bunch of different scenarios, but um, I'm a big like visualization type person, right? Uh, because visualization you know, the brain can't tell what is real versus what is fake. And that's the amazing thing of like when you, you know, when you dream, you wake up sweating if you've been chased in your dream, right? So your body has the same physiological reaction, creates the same neural pathways, whether you are awake or you're asleep and dreaming. It's incredible to me on some of these studies that they perform. So it's like, how do we leverage that, right, throughout the day? How do we uh, reframe this? How do we see the visuals? How do we create these new levels that we can achieve and accomplish and stick to and make happen on a daily basis. So a couple things. One is I'm a big believer in like constant reminders around you, right? So whether that's a kind of vision board or a movie of some sort or, um, but something that you can see on a daily basis to remind you and, and kind of trigger your brain to be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not playing at that, uh, that other level anymore. I play at this level. So one thing that I've done which I'll show you, I've got, I had this made, um, and you'll see dot five zero zero. So one reminder I've made for myself is that I'm not a 300 hitter, I'm a 500 hitter, right? Because I work differently, I think differently, I act, I behave differently than other people. I'm gonna make this happen because this is the level I wanna play at. I wanna be in a place like, unlike, uh, unlike anybody else, frankly, or very few people. I want to tap into my talents and my gifts at a level that has almost been not been seen before. That's how I want to differentiate myself. That's the level I want to get to. So this for me, having that constant reminder, and it can be a bracelet like this, it can be something on your wall, it can be anywhere you want it, but every time I see this, every day that I look at it, it's just that constant reminder of like, oh, I remember that belief. I remember that belief I had that one day, right? That one day where that I used to think a 300 hitter was a Hall of Famer, right? Well, I'm no 300 hitter Hall of Famer. I'm a 500 legendary player, right? I'm going to separate myself from other people. And then when I go into my business, right, I will actually close my eyes and I will pretend I will see my bank statements. I will see my, my, uh, my QuickBooks uh, where it has my income statement and I will see this revenue goal that I've set for myself, which is way above what I've ever earned in the past, right? And I continue to push the limits because that's what a 500 hitter does. But I will visualize myself like the excitement. I will feel it. I will connect with it of what it's like to be at that level and play at that level and how I'm going to act and think and behave and what I'm going to do and all this stuff because I'm physically rewriting my brain, right? I'm creating these neural pathways that associate this with certain actions and feelings so that when I'm done, and when I actually have to go do the work, that it's almost seamless, it's easy, that my body and brain already believe that that has happened, 
that it was possible and I achieved that. That's the power of the brain. That's the power of visualization. It's incredible. So it's that, what is that, you know, ultimate kind of level where you feel like you're getting stuck? It's, it's diving into like, what is the belief truly driving this? What did a coach or teacher or parent or someone else plant inside my head that I chose to believe and take on and make part of my sub- subconscious mind? And then it's starting to identify like, okay, how can I rewrite the story? How can I choose to see this, uh, this belief as something positive, as something different, and then I can sit down and visualize and feel happening so I can move past it? The powers inside you with this stuff, you know, um, I want my, uh, my son sitting over uh, playing a game right now and we're about to go to hockey tryouts and, and I want him to believe that he can play in the NHL uh, or that he can you know, create a great business, uh, that he can do what he wants to. I want my two girls to believe that same thing. Um, aside from the hockey thing, they just don't play hockey. Um, but for volleyball for them, right, that they can play for Team USA Volleyball so I, as a parent, have to be very careful about how I say certain things where I don't want to make it, I want them to be able to create the reality for themselves, right? And create those possibilities and not put those limitations on themselves. And I'm sure I've screwed up a ton, right? Um, I know I have, in fact. Um, but it's me being conscious of, of what I say to my kids, how I teach them, how I treat them, so that ultimately they can become the people that, that they want to be in this world. But that's, that's the power of beliefs. I mean, good or bad, right? If you, you come out of the gate and you know, you've said from the start that I can be anything that I want, I can do anything that I want, and I'm going to make $100 million. I mean, chances are you're going to be pretty, you're going to be on that path. You're going to be doing some amazing things because not much is going to hold you back, right? Where if we have these beliefs that I'm not good enough, right? that I'm not worthy, that I can never be fit, that I can never have a business that is that big or profitable, those are the things that we need to dig into and figure out where they came from, reframe them, and choose to rewrite that story and visualize it being successful. I have seen this work in my life. I've seen it work in my clients' lives. I've seen it work in, uh, you've seen the best of the best out there who do this sort of thing because they understand the power of the brain. It's, it's incredible the opportunity that you have ahead of you. So I want to challenge you today, just like I did, right, to, to figure out what limitation was holding you back, what that belief was, where it came from. And I want you to you know, get out a piece of paper and rewrite that story on what it could be, what it should be, what you want it to be, and sit and see it in your mind's eye and watch incredible things unfold. That was on my heart today. That was on my mind. That's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, And that's what I'm going to leave you with. So this podcast, again, a little bit different than you've experienced before. Um, I'm going to mix a few more of these in with some different uh, pretty incredible guests that I have coming up here in the next couple of months. Uh, But be on the lookout for those. Um, Would love to hear your comments about this topic as well. Some beliefs that you've had in the past. So please uh, down below in the comments or on social media. Let me know what, what some beliefs you have that have driven you and how you, you're choosing to rewrite those. Um, also ask again, hey, go like, follow us on this podcast. Uh, leave us a rating. Leave us some comments. Uh, tell your friends and family about it. And until next time, this is Matt Phillips, founder and CEO of Pro Athlete Advantage. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day.